Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick preview for the Google Nexus 6. For those of you that missed the press announcement or event, I will catch you up, but I want to start off this preview by focusing on two really important things. For those of you unfamiliar with the Nexus brand, it's Google's very own device with their own software updates, essentially guaranteeing you the best possible experience, in theory, for the Android operating system on a smartphone. And of course, that software experience is complemented by some of the most competent hardware where that money can buy. Unfortunately, this generation does carry a price tag to match. So that means that in the past, the Nexus brand brought you that uh, great hardware and software at a very affordable price tag, but it seems Google has started to shift their model or at least improve margins because you're looking at a phone that retails for only a little bit less than the Note 4 that I'll be picking up personally very soon. Now, no official street date for this phone, especially for my carrier of, cho of choice, Verizon, uh, but I can tell you when it comes to specifications, you are getting some of the best that at least any phone that isn't vaporware at this point carries. So let's get into that. Uh, of course, this is the actual Google Nexus 6 page. Uh, in terms of software, you're getting Lollipop out of the box. That is the latest version of Android 5.0. Uh, a lot of improvements to come. I mentioned a much larger display. This phone is actually manufactured by Motorola. As many of you know, Google did own Motorola up until not too long ago. Uh, but in terms of the cooperation, the teamwork, I can only imagine great things. I mean, my experience with the Moto X, nearly a stock uh, Google experience as close as it could get uh, essentially was fantastic and the idea of them finally they being you know uh, in this case Motorola and Google making a phone together that is a Nexus is really what many of us were waiting for now they say a bigger phone with more of everything and that's quite true you have a six inch quad HD display uh, of course quad HD becoming standard now on smartphones since the LG G3 in my opinion at least that's where everything is clearly going, even if Apple hasn't joined the party yet. Uh, in addition to that, uh, very good audio quality, and I expect that because Motorola does have some best-in-class audio performance. Uh, in terms of the processor, you're getting the same uh, Snapdragon 805 quad-core chip that you'll find in the brand new uh, Galaxy Note 4, again, that I will be covering soon. And those are different devices for different consumers, but both of these phones are beasts. I mean, this has a larger display, only a 5.7-inch display on the Galaxy Note 4, but here you're getting a full 6-inch experience. It's really 5.9. Uh, in terms of your camera, also major improvements. You've got a 13-megapixel camera. I'm not sure how I feel in terms, of, in terms of expectations with the sensor from Motorola, but hopefully performance will be great. But an F2 lens already speaks to or volumes about trying to improve low light performance and overall capability of this onboard uh, imaging uh, device imaging you know capability uh, but that's definitely nice to see some HDR plus built in not anything I wouldn't have expected uh, and of course the Google camera app often is a favorite at least for me if I get to enjoy it in a Nexus experience. Uh, one of the first Nexus devices available for and uh, excuse me for Verizon. You're looking at it right here. The original, uh, made by Samsung, uh, am an AMOLED display, solid battery life. Really one of the most polished Android phones ever made. A throwback I'm including in this video because quite frankly it deserves it. I mean at its time. It really was, in many ways, one of the few phones, you could say, that could really take on the iPhone directly. And that's not to say that I don't believe Android, since basically the OG Droid uh, in 2009, could take on the iPhone, because it could in terms of functionality. In fact, it could kill it. Maybe not uh, compete in terms of pound for pound or ounce for ounce for polish uh, and overall experience smoothness with the OS, but this was as close as it ever got, and of course, uh, you know, no actual physical buttons, the on-screen edge-to-edge look really coming into its own, a really nice piece of hardware. But moving along, we've come a really long way since 2011, 2012, and that's what you're looking at here. And this will be the first time, again, that Verizon sees a Nexus handset, yet another reason I am covering this. Uh, you do have uh, improved charging times and battery life. You can see up to six hours of use from only 15 minutes of charging. This is becoming a common trend 
uh, with much faster charging capability on smartphones now being integrated. The Note 4, another one. Uh, basically all handsets we're going to be seeing this with. Uh, 3320 uh, milliamp battery, so a nice big battery in there. You can see how thin, sleek the phone is, and you can get over 24 hours of use on a full charge. Uh, so that's always an inherent fear with a large device like this, big screen. I mean, really, this looks like a bigger Moto X in many ways, but with that Nexus blessing of, you know, the software updates continuing to come directly from Google, which is what you want if you are in the Android ecosystem and at least appreciate what things look like when they are stock, clean, and nothing can bloat or lag the experience. And it's really the polar opposite of the Note 4 that I'm buying, but again, different strokes for different folks. There is a product for everyone. That's what's beautiful about Android, and there's nothing really for me to guarantee that I won't end up picking up a Nexus 6 as well, uh, because again, it is going to be available for Verizon finally. Uh, but uh, it really does appear to be a fantastic device. Here are the actual paper specs for those of you that uh, geek out on such things. I can't zoom in apparently on them right there, but you will be able to see them in frame. Again, that display, just a hair under 6 inches, 2560 by 1440. It is an AMOLED, another reason I have a lot of interest in it. This is the biggest AMOLED device to date, at least formally announced. Sony's got one in their back pocket that's even larger. Uh, and it'll be their first uh, uh, AMOLED offering. Uh, this isn't a super AMOLED as per Samsung's own proprietary branding, but still I expect really good things, very high pixel density, and anyone who follows my channel knows that IPS can take a hike compared to a quality, keyword being quality, AMOLED display. It's just not even a comparison. Anyone who says otherwise, I, I don't know. I got a... What, what are they seeing through their glasses is what I would ask. The battery already mentioned, the camera, I mentioned the 13 megapixel rear camera, uh, optical image stabilization I did not mention. Also two megapixels on the front, could they have gone higher? Sure, do we need more than that for a selfie? HTC will take care of you if you do. Obviously that's, they believe that's the trend. For me personally, that's not my thing. So if it is your thing, you might wanna look for another device, even though that really shouldn't drive your decision on an entire uh, phone experience and if it does though certainly there are options out there the processor I mentioned the 805 uh, this is you know basically top of the line right now yes our phone's gonna come out with the a10 absolutely but the 805 is as good as anything is going to get and then in terms of graphics that Adreno 420 uh, leaps and bounds ahead of uh, the 330 that was in the previous gen that's paired with the 801 currently in the G3 and basically every other top tier uh, smartphone on the market uh, and then in terms of storage capacity options 32 or 64 uh, in terms of carriers everybody's on the list in terms of pricing you're looking uh, you can see can't even pre-order yet I believe October 28th will be the pre-order date but in terms of pricing six and a quarter now that's a lot of money and I mentioned it at the beginning of the video for a very good reason because unfortunately I think it's too much to ask um, as someone who would like to own a Nexus 6 on Verizon, I'd be more than willing to pay $625 for the, in my opinion, what it will probably amount to one of the best experiences on any device with regard to hardware and software. Unfortunately, there are just too many things missing uh, that I will be able to pull off with the Note 4 that I just am not sure this phone is going to deliver on. Don't get me wrong, pound for pound, this thing should be able to outperform and outbenchmark the Note 4 easily. Uh, but when it comes to the AMOLED display, I trust that even though Moto has done a great job at improving their quality, Samsung will still have the better display. Of course, software though, no competition. You're gonna see every update, and that in itself is a reason to own this phone in many ways. I mean, when you think about uh, the fact that Samsung makes every phone to be obsolete within one year cycle and maybe gives you support out to two, that isn't a great thing uh, in the at least realm of smartphones. Uh, but when it comes to design on this phone, they've made a nice phone. Even though it is really large, I have to see it in hand because that's what's really going to tell me whether or not it is too big because already the Note 4 is pushing it. 
um, even with its reduced bezel. Here we've got a very reduced bezel, mostly edge-to-edge -edge screen, but still I wonder. Uh, but from a spec standpoint, really, some best-in-class stuff here. Uh, everything looks good. Again, I wonder about the camera, but what is there not to like? I mean, this phone has everything. I mean, when it comes to Wi-Fi, of course, dual band, I didn't get into that. Uh, and it's just got it all. So there's a lot to like here about the Nexus 6. Uh, chime in in the comments. Tell me what you like or dislike about what Google has done with this. You know, how do you feel about expandable storage? How do you feel about all of the things that generally come with a Nexus announcement, and especially this big leap in price. Again, I'm willing to pay for quality, but that isn't what the Nexus brand has been about. It's about delivering quality at a value. So this is definitely a shift in the game plan uh, or the playbook for Google going ahead. And the Nexus 9, which I'll be previewing as well, also speaks to a shift in that uh, dynamic as well. But a lot to like here. Really excited to see this back on Verizon. Uh, paying homage uh, to its old, old friend. So let's just take a look at the specs for the Nexus 6. In terms of the operating system, as I mentioned, you're getting Lollipop, the latest version, most current, uh, 5.0 of the Android operating system. With regard to the screen, you're getting that 5.96 inch 2560 by 1440 QHD display. It is an AMOLED, which again is my personal preference on any device and eventually TVs once we get them, laptops, uh, I'm still waiting. Uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, Gorilla Glass 3, something that's pretty much standard uh, across the Nexus line, at least right now, with the Nexus 9 as well. In terms of the camera, you've got a 13 megapixel uh, with optical image stabilization sensor there. Dual LED ring flash, uh, I like that design. Uh, an f2 aperture there, so a fast, bright lens, uh, much like as well its Nexus 9 counterpart that's got the f2.4. Uh, so promise of good low light photography from this phone. 4K video capture at 30 frames per second. Yet another industry standard these days. And since this phone does have the best of the best with regard to hardware, it's competent. Uh, 2 megapixel front facing camera. HD video conferencing. Uh, so you've got that in tow. As I mentioned, if you really need the best front facing uh, camera on any smartphone, you'll turn to HTC. In terms of size, the phone is large, uh, but still not that heavy. Uh, and when I say large, uh, it's only large because of its screen real estate. Uh, Moto and Google, the cooperative here, has done a very good job of keeping this thing small, despite the fact that it sports nearly a 6-inch display. Uh, in terms of weight, 184 grams, I think is reasonable uh, in terms of the size. They've done a really good job on keeping it uh, light and thin. In terms of colors, you've got Midnight Blue and Cloud White. Uh, this is available for all carriers, as I mentioned before. So you see the networks. It covers basically every ba uh, band uh, and network type under the sun. And it's got the international uh, standards as well right there. Uh, with regard to audio output, you've got dual front-facing speakers. This is part of the theme this year with the Nexus lineup. More premium everything, inclu including the audio experience, so no compromise here in order to save some money. That's why premium pricing, again, 625 starting point, uh, is where the Nexus 6 begins. Uh, just like on the Nexus 9, we've got that HTC boom sound. So here on the 6 with Moto, I expect some very good audio quality because Moto has always been exceptional when it comes to their audio quality. In fact, better than probably any other smartphone manufacturer in my experience. Uh, the CPU, uh, critical. You've got a quad-core uh, uh, crate, or, or excuse me, again, a quad-core uh, crate 450 CPU, uh, 2.7 gigahertz. That is the Qualcomm uh, 805 SoC, and the 805 is pretty much as good as you're going to get right now. It's what's in the Note 4. It's what foreseeably will be in every top-tier phone outside of some rumored phones that have not been officially announced, seen uh, anything yet, uh, which are sporting the 810. And of course, the processor in the Nexus 9, eventually yet another uh, coveted chip to make its way into the balance of the mobile world, since that dual-core chip will outperform this quad-core chip easily. But this is still the best of the best right now, and for some time uh, in the future, easily. 
uh, part of the reason I'm personally picking up a Note 4. In terms of the GPU, you're looking at an Adreno 420, a very big jump in performance from the 330 uh, that you'll find in just about every top tier smartphone in the market right now based around the Snapdragon 801. Uh, which is which is pretty much the step before this 805 and it is an incremental gain but there is uh, a substantial difference in performance in many ways uh, wireless 80211 ac of course dual band bluetooth 4.1 nfc on board something i like to see unfortunately no nfc on a lot of devices uh, these days at least in the tablet world smartphones it has become more standard uh, since clearly there's so much application, even Apple has joined the club. Uh, memory, 32 gig or 64 gig internal storage. No storage expansion here, so keep that in mind. Uh, you've got a micro USB 2.0 port for charging. This does have support quick charging, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, nano SIM, 3.5 mil uh, audio jack. In terms of sensors, you've got GPS, accelerometer, gyroscope, magna uh, excuse me, a magnet, magnet, <sighs> Gyroscope, magnetometer, magnetometer, magnometer, uh, ambient light, magnometer, magnometer, magnet meter, magnometer, gyroscope, magnometer, ambient light sensor, barometer. So they've got all of their bases covered when it comes to sensors. The battery is a 3220 milliamp battery that. Uh, definitely is going to deliver a full day at the very least of uh, at the very least of use. You'll see the specifications right here. Uh, Qi wireless charging, which is great, very much welcomed. Uh, something I love that uh, the Nexus brand has been integrating into various devices for years now. They've been ahead of the curve. I wish everyone was doing this. Unfortunately, Sony is one of the only other manufacturers that builds in. Uh, wireless charging. Up to 250 hours of standby dis uh, display time uh, with it in, uh, in ambient display mode on. Uh, with it off, you're looking up to 330. So if you really want to conserve, you turn that ambient display mode off. And, and of course, ambient would keep it on all the time, uh, basically in a dimmed capacity. Uh, internet use, you're looking at 9.5 on Wi Fi, 10 on LTE. Interesting and talk time of up to 24 hours. Video playback 10 hours, so this is really a powerhouse in every possible way. And again, I will make the argument that if you're paying the premium for this device, you're doing it for good reason. Best hardware, best software, best track record of software support coming straight from the core of the Android operating system, and Motorola really where it all began with Google with the OG Droid and establishing them, they being Google, as a premier platform uh, in a piece of hardware. And here we've got it again. They're back together. Unfortunately, Motorola no longer a part of Google, but that in no way changes, in my opinion, the fact that uh, there is so much emphasis on getting every single element right here. So uh, it is more expensive than the previous gen, but I think well worth it with the more premium quality that I expect over the Nexus 5's build quality, among other things. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.